Hey guys, I'm Noel from creationeffects.com and this is the tutorial for using elephants for Adobe After Effects. This is the second animal released as part of the Beast series with more to come soon. The first animal was horses and um, my goal with these animals is to give users who maybe aren't experienced animators a quick and easy way to make custom animations in which they can control the animal's behavior and create some really cool looking animations. I won't say realistic animations because these are 2D puppets essentially made from 2D images but they're great as motion graphics elements or for adding to your 3D scenes. Uh, if you like these kind of effects you should definitely check out the Critter Collection series at creationeffects.com. You can make custom flocks of birds, schools of fish, and swarms of insects all for Adobe After Effects, all in 3D and all very customizable so uh, you can create something for any kind of scene. It was the popularity of those templates that inspired me to work on this Beast series. So let's get on with the tutorial. Uh, this is an After Effects template and it includes both an Asian and African adult elephant which you can customize to look more male or female and also a baby for each species. Uh, it comes with a bunch of preset movements to choose from or you can move them manually using the controls. So I'm going to start by showing you how to use the effect in the simplest scene possible just to give you an idea of how it works. Then I'm going to explain the effect and kind of summarize how it's made and then I'll explain some basic rules for duplicating elephants or copying elephants in, into a new comp and then I'll go into customization I'll go over using the primary actions and how to transition from action to action and then I'll go over the secondary actions and lastly I'll have some helpful tips on using the elephants. But first, real quick, let me show you how to open this zip file correctly. Uh, if you do it the wrong way you might get some errors in After Effects about missing files. So uh, if you're on a PC you're going to want to right click it and look for an option that says extract all um, and if you're on a Mac you can just double click it and then open up the folder and then you can open this file in After Effects 2020 or later. Another option for opening the effect if you're already working on a project and you want to use the elephants in that existing project you can just import it. Just go to file import file and then you can uh, look for the the AEP file and just import it by clicking open and that'll put it all inside a new folder inside your project panel. When you first open the project you'll see some instructions here regarding how to copy elephants into new comps and uh, I'll go over these shortly. But for now uh, just to give you an idea of how this works I'm gonna create a very basic scene and put my elephant into it. So I'm gonna open up we'll do an Asian elephant. Now this uh, comp has kind of a, a weird resolution. This is just so that you can see the whole elephant at its full scale. So you might want to change the resolution or copy it into, new, into a new comp but for demonstration purposes we can leave it like it is. Um, I've got this background image that I imported earlier. I'm going to bring that into my comp. I'll scale it up. I'll position my elephant where I want it and I can scale it to whatever size I want. Uh, if I go to my effect controls panel and with my layer selected you're going to see a bunch of controls. These are for customizing the elephant. If you don't see this panel you can find it in window and then effect controls down here. Um, I'm going to go over these in detail uh, later but uh, for now we're just going to choose an action and I'll choose walk and I'll set it to walk for 10 seconds. It's plenty of time and uh, all we need to do is animate the position of this elephant. You can see if I play it back he's walking in place. So we just need to animate him to go from here to here. I'll hit the P key to reveal the position property and I'll go to the first frame and I'll position him over here and I'll add a keyframe and then I'll go forward about four seconds and I'll position him over here. <clears throat> I have no idea if that's the right speed. I'm sure there's a way to calculate how many pixels per second he should move at what size but I think the easiest way is just to do some trial and error and uh, we can just you can see if I play it back his feet are sliding forward so he's going way too fast. 
So what I can do is just stretch this out and try again. And that's looking really close actually, pretty good guess I'd say. So that's a really uh, basic example like I said. If, if you have more actions that you add to your elephant, like he goes from a walk to a run, um, you're gonna need some more keyframes so that he changes speed. But uh, that shows you how easy it is. And uh, there's a lot more you can do with your scene, obviously. You can bring in a bunch of other 3D elements and um, create elaborate 3D scenes and, and create a camera layer and animate that. I am thinking of creating a tutorial on how to make 3D scenes. Um, so you might wanna look for that on the uh, Creation Effects YouTube channel. Okay, let's talk about how this effect works. Maybe you're curious, or if you want to do any heavy customization, it'll be important to know. Um, I've got my African elephant open. Um, again, we can see our customization controls on here. If I scroll down, you can see some effects that I've added. These are all puppet pin effects. Only one of them is turned on, so this is the main effect which controls all of the movements of the elephant. Just in case you're not familiar with the Puppet Pin tool and what it does, uh, I'm going to show you really quick. I'll just start a new composition. And I'll go in here and add uh, an elephant image. You can see he's incomplete, but that's okay. And I'm going to use my Puppet Pin tool, which is right here, and just start clicking on the elephant. You can see when I add a pin, it creates this mesh for the elephant. I'll add a few more pins to anchor these points so that they don't move. And I can grab one of those pins and move it around and you can see how that warps the shape of the elephant. Um, down here in the puppet effect, if I open up the mesh and then open to form, you can see all the individual pins. And if you open up those, uh, there's a position property so you can animate or keyframe any of these pins to make him move. And if I change this to advanced, uh, that opens up some new properties like scale or rotation. Um, these properties are only available in the advanced puppet pin tool, which is relatively new. This wasn't available in older versions of After Effects. Um, and these are, are really what made this template possible. Anyway, that's the basics of the puppet pin tool. Let me go back here. I'll hit the E key to show all of these effects. Um, so you can see we've got more here. These are also puppet pin effects. Uh, I've got one for each primary action. So if I hide this one and just show like the run puppet effect and then play that back, you can see him run. So this one effect has tons of keyframes. Um, you can see here, they only go to, to about a second and then it loops continuously. Um, but you can see in our main effect, uh, there aren't any keyframes here. This effect is actually getting information from these effects and applying them here in this effect, um, all depending on which action you've chosen. And it does that through a bunch of uh, expressions on this effect. So remember that that uh, elephant image was incomplete. Um, and actually, this is a pre-comp. Um, if I open it up, it opens up the pre-comp and you can see all the different images that it takes to make up your elephant. And they have to be separate because they all move independently when the elephant is, is doing its thing. So back in the, in the main elephant layer, um, it's taking all those different body parts and using that puppet pin tool, it brings all the different meshes together to create this elephant. And then it's moving all of the pins, uh, getting information from the keyframes on these effects and moving them in this effect. Hopefully that makes sense. I mentioned I would go over these, these three rules uh, for duplicating elephants or for copying them um, into another comp, which pretty much everyone is gonna need to do. I'm gonna go back to the pre-comp, which has all of our body parts. And if I scroll up, uh, we've got these two layers, target comp name and target layer name. And you can see these are just text layers. They say African elephant, African elephant. Um, a lot of the, uh, the controls on this elephant layer, like the mouth open and the eye close, which control different movements on the elephant, those are affecting layers in this, inside this comp. 
So in order for it to do that, there needs to be expressions on these layers that are taking those instructions from this other comp. Um, so those expressions are referencing this comp name and this layer name, which means that if you ever rename this elephant layer or rename the comp, or if you copy this layer to bring it into a different comp, or if you duplicate this layer to create multiple elephants, in any of those situations, um, the comp name and or the elephant layer name is going to change, but the expressions won't update, which means that some of those controls on your elephant layer aren't gonna work anymore. Uh, but I've made it really easy for you to, uh, to update those expressions. All you gotta do is edit the text. So let me show you a quick example. I'll go back here. I've got this layer selected. I'll just copy it, Command C or Control C. I'll create a new comp and I'll call it Safari. And I'm gonna paste that layer and let's just rename it Elephant. So I have a layer named Elephant in a comp named Safari. And you can see if I try to close the eye, uh, it doesn't work. So let me open up the pre-comp uh, by double clicking this layer and I can just edit these layers. Uh, I'll use this text tool. The comp name is Safari. And the layer name is Elephant. And then when you're done, be sure to hide those layers and uh, you can go back to your elephant and you can see that the eye is now closed. Now let's say you've got more than one elephant. Um, you wanna create a herd of elephants. That's pretty easy to do. You would just uh, duplicate the layer so now we have this layer elephant two, but uh, we run into a problem because both of these layers now have that same pre-comp. And we want a separate pre-comp for each layer so that we can control each elephant individually without affecting the other elephant. So we can go back to our project panel and um, in our pre-comps and images folder here, We've got all the different pre-comps um, for the Asian and the African elephant. Let me open up African elephant. And here is the main pre-comp um, that is used in this African elephant comp here. Since we've got two African elephants, we'll just duplicate that pre-comp, Command or Control D. And we need to connect this pre-comp to the second elephant layer. So the way that we do that is we just select them both. We select this pre-comp in the project panel, and then we select this layer in your timeline. And with them both selected, you just hit the Alt or Option key, and then drag it onto the layer. So that updates the source of this layer. Uh, if we go to source name, we can see that these have different sources. But we still need to update the layer name in this pre-comp. Um, I'll double click to open up that pre-comp. And you can see we still got um, all the expressions in this comp are referencing the elephant layer. And uh, go back to layer name. Our new elephant is called elephant two. So we just need to add a two. Again, you can go back to these instructions here and see how that's done. Just remember that every elephant needs its own pre-comp and each pre-comp needs to be referencing the correct comp name and layer name. So that covers these first two rules. And the uh, third rule here is pretty simple. It's just talking about uh, the order of the effects on this layer. Um, the order is important, so don't rearrange any of these effects. And if you add a new effect, like a, like a color correction effect, um, which I would recommend just to get the elephant looking like it belongs in your scene, uh, make sure that that effect goes below this last line here. Otherwise, uh, the whole thing just won't work right. All right, let's talk about customization. Uh, I'm gonna go over these primary actions first. Uh, this first control here, flip, that just changes the direction the elephant is facing. And then um, you can choose your, your action here. We looked at this earlier. Uh, if you get any of the other animals, you'll probably realize that this is far less than the other animals. Uh, but don't let it fool you. This elephant is actually the most complex of all of them. It's just that a lot of those behaviors and movements are down here in the secondary actions. So I, I think for most people, all they're going to need is just one action. Um, but you can actually have up to five and have them transition smoothly from one action to another. So uh, let's test that out. If you uh, will 
we'll choose walk for our first action and we'll have him walk for two seconds and let's say after two seconds we want him to transition from walk to a run now in the second action section um, you can see we've got a couple different additional properties here uh, we still have the duration so we can set how long he runs and then we have these other ones like first to second transition duration so this is how long that transition from walk to run will last so right now the elephant is going to walk for two seconds and then each of these pins which determine where all the different parts of the body are they're going to start moving from their position in the walk action at the two second mark to their position in the run action and they're going to do that over a duration of 0.6 seconds so let me just play that back and we'll see what it looks like <clears throat> and you can see that's not very natural looking and that's okay it's, it's probably not going to happen on the first try but that's what these additional properties are for you can play with these and try and find the most natural transition so one thing you can do is adjust the second action time shift control so right now it's set to zero which means that it's going to transition from walk to the very first frame of the run action that would be if we uh, unhide the run action and go to the first frame this is the position it's going to transition to if we put uh, like 0.2 here that would be what is that that's like six frames so I, I go forward six frames and this is the position that uh, it'll transition to and not only can we adjust the position it transitions to but we can adjust the position that it transitions from by adjusting this duration here so usually you can experiment with these controls and the transition duration I would just change these numbers by a factor of 0.1 and then preview it um, and then so try 0.3 then 0 0.4 0 0.5 try and find that most natural transition one last thing I want to show you about these primary action controls is the uh, slow step so with this action uh, the elephant just takes a step every three or four seconds it's a good action to use while he's grazing but that erratic movement makes it really hard to keyframe the elephant when you're trying to match uh, the layers position with the the movements of the legs so I've done all the hard work for you uh, you can just go to your project panel and in the extras folder we've got this comp called slow step keyframes I'll open that up uh, you can read the instructions in there basically it just tells you to uh, reveal the anchor point keyframes of this layer you can do that by selecting the, the layer and hitting the A key and then select all the keyframes and then you can copy them and then go back to your elephant layer reveal the anchor point and move to where uh, your slow step action begins if it's action one uh, it's going to begin at the first frame if it's one of these actions uh, you just want to take into account the duration of the previous actions as well as the duration of the transitions um, that come before that slow step action I'm just going to paste them at frame zero uh, be sure to select the anchor point and then paste and now that elephant layer is going to move in perfect sync uh, with the leg movements all right I'm gonna close our primary actions and we can look at the secondary action controls the secondary actions can be combined with the primary actions uh, you can see we've got a number of controls down here which control different body parts so these can be keyframed and you could animate very controlled movements of your elephant um, and then you've got a number of automatic controls up here like trunk curling and ear flapping and tail swings that you can just turn on or off um, using the checkboxes here let me read this comment up here uh, when turned on the automatic actions below that's these ones here replace the default movements of the primary action so with those primary actions um, like run while he's running this trunk is going to kind of bob up and down if you turn on one of these automatic trunk actions and I think these first four affect the trunk so if I turned on curl trunk 
Um, the trunk is just kind of kind of randomly going to curl up and move around. Um, that's going to replace the uh, that default movement of the trunk bobbing up and down. And uh, so that entire trunk curling movement, I can't remember exactly. I think it lasts like 15 seconds or something. Um, you can go to a specific time in that movement by adjusting this time shift. So if you put five in there, uh, it's going to start five seconds into that, that trunk movement. And when it's done, it's just going to keep looping uh, seamlessly. But this is a way to get a very specific movement of the trunk. So if you need a, a, a movement of the trunk curling up, like it does in the beginning there, you can go to that specific point in time where that movement begins. And uh, let me show you a little trick. If Let's say you want to keep the trunk in this position. Like maybe you want your elephant to be carrying something like a paintbrush or something. Well, one thing you can do, uh, I could add a keyframe to the time shift and I'll hit the U key to reveal that keyframe. You can see it's right here. Um, and I can go forward. Let's say we want them to keep that pose for three seconds. I can go forward three seconds. I'll make this 504. And we're gonna subtract three seconds from that time shift. That would be negative three. And then let's say from then on, we just want it to play normally. So we can go forward another, let's say 10 seconds. Uh, that would be 1504. And then we'll add 10 seconds to this value, which would be 13. And that should, I've never actually done this before. I hope it works. Yeah, so that does work. I, I had never done it before, but I, I figured there was no reason why that wouldn't work. Hopefully that makes sense. That could come in handy if you wanted to pause any of these movements. Let me turn off that automatic trunk curling. Okay, let's look at grays now. I'll turn that on. This one's a little different because it, it turns on some other elements from our pre-comp. Um, that's this grass here. I won't play it all the way back, but let me just scrub through. It grabs some, a clump of grass and eats it. And then it goes back for the rest of the grass and eats that too. And then you can see that the grass uh, regenerates here so that you can continue this action if you wanted to. Now it kind of pops up suddenly, which could be distracting. So you've got some opacity controls here uh, if you wanted to make it fade up. And I mean, you would probably want some, some grass elements in front of the, uh, the elephant in your scene so that uh, it kind of covers up that regenerating grass. And then you've got a position shift for both that first clump of grass and the second clump. So you could animate the grass to move if the elephant was walking while he was eating. And then you've got some controls for like the height of the grass. And then again, you've got the time shift so you can go to any part of that action. And you can always animate this checkbox using keyframes. So you can have him graze for a little bit and then turn that off. Uh, moving on, let's go to spray dirt. Spray dirt and spray water is very similar. They use the same elephant movements. The only difference is uh, which layer you turn on down here. So let me show you. I'm actually going to start with spray water because it's a little simpler. Um, I'll turn it on. And this says to use this feature, unhide the water particles layer. So that's here. And I'll scrub through to show you how he picks up some water and then tosses it on his back. And then if you keep playing, he grabs more water and then he tosses it in a different way, kind of to his side. So you can, again, go to any time in that, in that movement. And uh, at the bottom of this section, you've got these water manual controls. So these are only here if uh, you wanted to create your own custom trunk movement instead of going with this uh, preset movement. Um, and you would do that with these controls down here where you can animate the trunk. But if you wanted to spray it you know, forward or something, you would have to create your own trunk movement. And then you would have to enable these water controls, the manual controls, and you can see uh, now we've got our particle producer is up here and you can move it around with these controls and you can change the direction and the birth rate, uh, the force of the water, how spread out it is. And uh, you can just kind of animate this 
to <clears throat> move with the, the end of your trunk. So those particles obviously are in this layer here, and we've got uh, our CC particle systems to effect, which is creating the water. And uh, you can adjust the, the color of the water in this effect, um, and you can adjust like the, the size of the droplets in here. And pretty much everything else that you would want to adjust is, is right here in your controls. So I've, I've made it as easy as I could for you. And uh, oh, the other thing to note, this layer uh, is parented, you can see, to this African elephant layer. So if you scale this layer down or move it around, the water particles are going to stay with it. So you don't ever have to, to move this layer. In fact, just leave it alone. Uh, don't ever change its posi position or anything, or it won't sync with the, the elephant layer. And then remember, if you want to move this elephant layer to a different comp, you would just uh, bring this layer with it. So copy them both. Uh, I think that's everything. Uh, spray dirt is very similar. You've got some manual controls for that. Uh, the only difference is you've got these two layers. So one is for the dirt particles, and then another one is for the smoky dust. And having him throw dust, it takes a lot longer to render it just because the uh, particles are much bigger. So just be aware of that. It's going to take a while to render. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, whenever you're using the water, or dust, you definitely want to turn on motion blur. Because look at these particles now. And then with motion blur, uh, it's a big difference. Uh, I think it's much more realistic than these little faded spheres, which kind of look like little fairies or something. Okay, I'll close that and uh, let's move on to flap ears. Um, this is about 20 seconds, I think, of, of the ears kind of flapping back and forth irregularly. I animated the pins so that the top of the ear moves first and then the bottom of the ear kind of moves on a delay so it's a little more realistic. And then it wiggles a little bit down here. And uh, it's just a good way to add some variation if you have like a herd of elephants. You don't want their ears to all be doing the same thing so you can turn that on. Uh, it's kind of the same deal with the swing tail. It swings back and forth erratically. Next, let's look at the head position. Before I do, let's go back up here and read this. Uh, to reset any position controls below, click on the values and enter zero. Uh, what I mean by position controls are controls like this, which say position on them. They're always going to have some weird number in the thousands here. And uh, if you ever want to reset it, you would just click on it and enter zero. It's important to remember. Um, to adjust that position, you could either click and drag on a value, or probably a better way, just have this secondary action control selected, and then you can see the crosshairs. And you can just click and drag on the crosshair. Now you'll notice as I move it around that the, the ears are doing some funky things, which is unfortunate. So you don't want to overdo this um, just because of how it, it warps the ears something to look out for. And uh, then we've also got this head tilt. You can see as you tilt the head that the trunk goes with it. Um, this will only work if spray is off and you got to be careful because some of these um, automatic ones will override the manual positioning. And then foot position, we've got some more position controls. I've got this selected so I can see the crosshairs. So you can move the foot. Next, let's look at the trunk. You have two different position controls here so that you can animate the trunk. So this is pretty flexible. Uh, one thing you want to watch out for, and watch as I'm moving this pin to the other side here, you can see how that trunk just kind of flipped. So the way to avoid that, if you're animating these pins, just be sure to stretch it all the way out as it's crossing over like that, and that'll avoid that. Uh, trunk kind of flipping positions like that. Now if you've got one of these automatic trunk options on, you won't be able to change the middle position. You'll only be able to change this one. And actually, let's turn on trunk curling. You can see that the trunk position has moved, but the crosshair is still down here. Um, and it still kind of works the same. 
So this, this can be used just to adjust that tip of the, of the trunk, but you don't want to overdo it probably while the automatic actions are on. And let's look at the ears really quick, uh, and you can change the size of the ears. You can't go too big, or this happens. Um, and you can rotate both the near and far ear, although the far ear usually doesn't even show up. Uh, but to rotate it, uh, the idea is you would keyframe this. Again, you would want automatic ear flapping to be turned off, um, but let's say you just wanted to do a controlled ear flap. Uh, you can keyframe this starting with the value of zero. Go forward about 20 frames and go rotate it like 75 degrees. Go forward another 20 frames and go back to zero. And let me reveal the keyframes. <clears throat> you can see we've got these three keyframes now. And what I recommend is you right click them, choose keyframe assistant, and then choose easy ease. And that'll make the movements smoother. And uh, if we play it back, you can see how the top moves first and then the bottom drags behind it. Uh, so that's more realistic. There's a delay. Uh, next we have the tail, and this is very similar to the ears. You can just kind of, if you need a more controlled movement, you can animate it to go back and forth. But, uh, and there's a delay on the end of the tail. Next we have breathing. You can control the intensity and uh, how fast it bre he breathes. And the rest of these are, are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'll just go through them really quick. You can adjust the tusk size. So if it's a female, you probably want something smaller. Uh, you can animate the mouth to open or close. Same with the eyes and body mass. Uh, that's a fun one. You can make them a little fatter or skinnier. Uh, you don't want to go too fat or it looks really weird. Shift weight, you can lean them forward or back and then lower the front or the back. I'm not sure why you'd want to use that, but it's there. And then uh, this high angle perspective control, all that does is it raises the far legs and it gives it more of a look that you're, you're looking down on the elephant. So depending on where your elephant is in your scene, that might come in handy. And that's all of the controls I wanted to show you before I give you uh, some tips on using the elephants, let me just show you the babies really quick. The babies were kind of done as an afterthought. So some of the uh, automatic movements may not work quite as well. This is actually just a, an adult Asian elephant with some modifications. Like uh, you can see I've added this bulge effect to make his head bigger. And uh, if you open up the pre-comp, I've added more of a bulge on the back and um, I've shortened the trunk. So what that means, um, like for example, if I turn on graze, when he picks up the grass, you can see his trunk is actually higher than the grass. Um, so you can, I mean, if you didn't need him to graze, you could, uh, you would probably need to shift the position of the grass using these controls. I suppose you could also adjust the trunk doing this. Um, just add some keyframes to that position control. All right, let me share a few things that I learned while using the template um, that might help you. Uh, first of all, if you've got a, a herd of elephants, um, so you've duplicated your elephant layer, uh, you've created pre-comps for each of them, you've connected them using that alt-drag technique, and you've uh, edited the target comp name and target layer name, you also will probably want to add a little bit of variation to each one so they don't look like a bunch of robots that are walking or marching in sync with each other. So uh, here's some things you can do. Um, you might want to turn on curl trunk for some of them, and but not all of them. Um, and then also you don't want them to curl trunks in sync with each other, so just give them each a different number here. Same with the flapping of the ears or the swinging tails. You can raise the head of a few of them or you can shift their trunk. Um, the idea is just that they're not all in the same shape because uh, they're going to be all the same skin texture and everything. You can't avoid that. But you can make other adjustments. Obviously the tusk size and the ear size you can change. Um, you maybe even want to make some with higher shoulders and a lower butt. I don't know. 
You can even uh, make changes to the actions. For example, an important change that you can do is you can speed up the walk or slow it down uh, depending on what you need. So if I reveal the effects in here, what we can do is stretch out the keyframes on any of these actions here. So let's say we want them to walk faster. What you can do is just select the layer and hit the U key to reveal the keyframes. We'll close slow step and then we can see the walk keyframes. There's going to be a lot of them. Uh, let me zoom in. And you could just uh, box select them. And you'll know when you've reached the end of the keyframes because uh, the next keyframes, like for the run action, are going to be um, a different duration than these ones. So once they're all selected, all you got to do is hold down the Alt or Option key and then click and drag any of these last keyframes. And then that'll let you stretch them out to make the action slower or bring them in to make it faster. Now, if you want a lot of control over a part of your elephant and maybe these controls just aren't giving you what you need, you can always go in there and edit the pins directly. So uh, if it's part of your action, you can edit the keyframes or the pins on these layer on these effects. Um, otherwise, you could just adjust pins in this effect. Let me show you an example. Let's say we wanted to make it look more like we're we're not directly to the side of this elephant, but we're looking at it from an angle more. Um, what we can do, we've got uh, the hind far leg and the uh, front far leg here. If we open those up. So we're in the front far leg now, and uh, we can ignore these starch ones, but these ones, if we open those up, we can select all of those pins, and then we can just drag on any of these position values, and you can see how that's shifting that entire mesh over. Or we could just select a certain number of pins and uh, move those over. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is click and drag on the pins directly. Because of the expressions on these on these pins, um, that'll just screw it up. So you want to actually get in there and click and drag on these values. Uh, that's just an example. You could also keyframe any pin that you want. Um, that'll just give you a little more extra control if you need it. Let's open the pre-comp. It's possible that you might want to make adjustments to the photos. So I, I should explain some limitations there. You can make any changes you want to these photos. For example, add a texture over it. Um, just know that anything you do has to stay within the edges of the animal. So you could overlay some paint or blood or something on this animal. But like one thing you couldn't do is add a saddle or something to him because a saddle would come out here and it would go past that boundary of this shape. So if you wanted to add something like that, something that extends beyond the shape of this elephant, you would have to do that in this comp and just composite it over the elephant layer. And then you'd have to animate it somehow uh, to sync with the elephant's movements. I think that's everything that I have to show you. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy that effect. Uh, be sure to check out the other Animals in the Beast series, like the horses. You can find them at creationeffects.com. And uh, while you're there, look around. There's a lot of other great effects there. There are custom 3D books, auroras. Uh, there's custom flocks of birds and insects and fish. VHS effects, old film effects, glitch effects, text effects, and much more. So please check it out. Thanks for watching.